It will soon be easier for Barnstable residents to compost food scraps. Incoming Superintendent of Schools Meg Mayo Brown visits the district, and we hear from Town Manager Tom Lynch on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Monday, March 7, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. Barnesville residents will soon be able to bring food scraps to the transfer station. Energy Coordinator Richard Elric says the town received a grant to help launch the program. Uh, we hope to uh, begin the kitchen scraps collection program uh, May 1. That's the date we're shooting for. Still having to uh, get the okay from Mass DEP, but it's a, what they call a presumptive approval. So it, it, it's not going to be a, a challenge. And again, it's, it's really just going to be a shed. Uh, in which we've got several barrels. People can dispose of their kitchen scraps there. There'll be another barrel full of sawdust. So when you drop in your kitchen scraps, you just kind of cover them with uh, sawdust and, and, and you're on your way. And, you know, we really don't know how uh, many residents are going to take advantage of it. There's several other towns in the Cape and, you know, they get about a 1% to 3% participation. Elric is hoping that residents will take advantage of the food waste recycling program. Again, that program will begin this May. Incoming Superintendent of Schools Meg Mayo-Brown is already getting acclimated to her future job. Mayo-Brown visited the district last week, according to Interim Superintendent of Schools Bill Butler. Uh, we, went we came over here and, uh, and met with uh, the town manager and uh, assistant town manager uh, at 8.30, and uh, then it was just a series of meetings for her. She, uh, she met with some of the directors uh, during the morning. Uh, uh, Director of Student Services Gina Hurley, uh, Director of Technology Beth Ann Orr, Director of Special Education uh, Jane Gizzard. Uh, then she uh, met with Assistant Superintendent Kristen Harmon and uh, went over to Barnstable United Elementary to read to students I love it. as <laughs> part of Read for America week. Uh, and then, uh, then she met collectively with all of the principals uh, in the afternoon, uh, came back to uh, school administration building and met with uh, Kristen and Gareth Markwell and me uh, to review the budget and then she attended this then she oh I'm sorry then she went back to Centerville uh, to uh, read again. Brown will officially begin her new role July 1st. Now we get an update on what's happening in the town manager's office as Channel 18's Sarah Colvin talks with town manager Tom Lynch. We had a busy week, uh, lots of activities going on, uh, lots of positive activities going on yeah, in town Yeah, I thought Hall I'd this look week. back a little toward last week and then a little bit uh, toward what we're anticipating this week. And, sure. You know, probably, uh, you know, one of the more uplifting events last week was the swearing in of the uh, five sergeants. You know, it, 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 it's a largest group that I think the chief said they've ever brought in at one time. Um, there's been a, a changing of the guard over there of the, at the supervisory level and at the patrol level um, in terms of we've had so many retirements and I tried to contrast the fact that you know you hate to lose good people because you know we've had a, a the, the police department has enjoyed uh, a really strong reputation uh, individuals have been there a long time helped build that put it together um, but the young uh, or new, um, some of them been, you know, uh, uh, patrol officers for 20 years before their elevation. But the, the thing that impressed me was the, the, the training they've gotten, the um, special assignments they've taken, whether it's, you know, in the canine corps or uh, with, with uh, 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 detective work, and it's one works for the, uh, with, with the drug task force, mm -hmm. uh, others have all been field training officers or, or SWAT teams or, um, adopt to school programs, all those aspects that they've been doing. Um, so they, they do much more than just their little niche in the job. They really have a, a wide uh, variety of experience and then a lot of community activity, a lot of, lot of community service that's out there in addition to that. So I thought, you know, it's always uplifting for the families, you know, the parents are there proud, the, the, the uh, you know, husbands and wives that are, you know, feeling, uh, uh, you know, really good about their, uh, you know, the promotion that's here. Um, but it also says that, you know, we're, we're able to train folks and promote from within and uh, still hopefully maintain that, that um, 
uh, high level of service and reputation that, that they enjoy. So that was a, you were there, yes. it was a good feeling. You could just feel that, you know. It really was. And um, earlier in the week also, we, we, I, I had a chance to meet with uh, the superintendent-elect uh, uh, Meg Mayo Brown. I'm sure that, uh, you know, Bill Bartman may cover a little more of that during his segment. But, you know, we had a chance to talk about, um, you know, areas that she wanted to concentrate in. Uh, I was able to explain how, uh, you know, I've observed over, you know, with three superintendents, um, the strong bond that's developed between the municipal and the, uh, you know, school budgets that, you know, I support their budget each year after the process that they go through, uh, how we help with uh, human uh, resources as well as with uh, all the budgetary items. So, uh, you know, I think she was uh, pleasantly surprised to hear us say, how can we help you? Uh, I'm not sure she's had that in, in all of her other experiences that, that have been out there, but I think that's an attitude that Bonsville has developed of, of how the schools and the municipal government can work together uh, for the quality of education that we want our kids to have, as well as to be fiscally responsible, uh, you know, with our budget and, and moving forward. So those were, you know, two highlights of last week that I came away with. And, and I also had a chance to meet with the Hyannis Area Chamber of Commerce, and uh, we talked about, uh, you know, some of their uh, upcoming events and plans. And, and um, the, uh, we, <coughs> we also talked a little bit about what do your businesses want? You know, what, what, what are your business uh, uh, leaders telling you that they're looking for you to do? And again, how can the town help advance that? Uh, you know, Bonsville has, and uh, you know, the the eleventh um, largest uh, commercial property tax base in the Commonwealth. So I think that surprises some people when they think of um, our, you know, being the hub of Cape Cod here, here, here uh, in our peninsula. But when you look statewide, uh, we're right up there when it comes to um, uh, you know that category. So. I'm going to be putting together for the next town council meeting some of the business changes that have gone on, the growth that we've had. So, um, and probably at the uh, one of our <coughs> uh, Bonsal this morning visits, I'll go through a, a list of, of changes that I've mm. seen because we keep having folks invest in our community, and it's a it's an enviable position uh, to be in because they bring jobs. They bring opportunity for visitors coming down so they'll see something new and different. And I'm always pleased when, um, you know, we have that, that kind of growth going on. Absolutely. Well, even just thinking, you know, mm -hmm. over the past two years, the Whole Foods and then the new Bed Bath & Beyond and the new Ethan Allen and then so, you know, we're hearing new businesses coming in on Main Street. It's just right. it's a really a good mix of kind of national and local businesses that are that are choosing to uh, open up shop here in Barnstable is a good thing. And I was particularly pleased to hear that Centerville Pie is going in to uh, <laughs> come before licensing so that they can go in over at the airport because it's an easy in and out. People don't always think of it but um, you know uh, more than on, on more than one occasion I've driven down to Centerville Pie at, during my lunch hour just to get an egg salad sandwich <laughs> and, and a nice dessert so having them right here in Hyannis I, I uh, it, it's a location that I hope people will begin to get used to and go over there they run do a wonderful job so absolutely I'll bet they'll get a lot of business there uh, indeed and I think last week we also talked about uh, fee approvals that I was reviewing uh, I did in fact uh, you know approve the water pollution control fees and the um, uh, you know the the, the new uh, sewer fees that uh, that are uh, out there and um, the high highness um, you know water system fees and the um, uh, the transfer station fee that this year they're looking at a at a, at a fee of around two hundred and forty dollars to cover all of the um, expenses out at the um, transfer station that fee has gradually gone up uh, it should stabilize somewhat now because uh, that huge increase that we that we experienced about a year and a half ago but we're able to buff it somewhat with some of our reserves um, now is, is, is really hitting home, and I'm sure Dan Santos has, you know, discussed that in great, greater detail. We'll be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable, this morning, weekdays at 7 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will chat with the Chief of Police, Paul McDonald. We'll talk with DPW Director Dan Santos. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.